Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you, transcribed Monday through Friday, by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Darling, I hope you didn't mind my asking Roger up to dinner. Mind? Why should I mind? I should say not. I'm glad he's coming. Well? What's the matter? Didn't you expect me to be? Well, certainly. But I didn't expect such uh, enthusiasm. You didn't? I thought wives weren't supposed to appreciate unexpected company. I don't know about other wives, but this wife does. She loves unexpected company that isn't expected. I'm certainly a lucky fellow. You may be a lucky fellow, but you're also a fellow with some soap behind his left ear. Where? Here. Now, out of my way. I want to put on my tie. David, how come you invited Roger anyway? I mean, I, I think it's funny you see him all day at the office. He did something special. I thought you said you were glad he was coming. Well, I am. That doesn't have anything to do with it. I just wondered... Just, uh, just what? I just was wondering if it was about anything special. Anything wrong with that? No, no. Not a thing. <gasps> oh, listen, David. We're going to have to sit right down at the table when he comes or my leg of lamb will taste like a wooden leg. It's probably him now. He... He what? He is at the door. I know it. That's why I'm answering it. I give up. You'll never talk correct English. What did I say wrong now? Hello. Hello, Roger. Roger, hmm? can you understand what I say when I talk? Most of the time. You see, David, he understands. He's a mind reader. I'm frightfully hungry. We'll wait till after dinner, and then we'll decide about those barns. I've been looking forward to it all afternoon. Barns? What barns? David and I had some idea about redoing it. Oh, what's the matter? Did I say something wrong? No, no, no. Only this is something of surprise to me, that's all. Well, I don't quite David, know. you could have told me about the barn. Now, darling, where's my matches? I wasn't trying to keep a secret from no, you. No, much you weren't. We were just going to discuss, darling, whether we're going to reconstruct the old barn or... Start building completely fresh, that's all. I don't think we ought to go spending a lot of money on barns. We're not going to be living in them. I'm sorry I brought it up, David. By the way, that must have been quite a fire you saw last night, Claudia. David was telling me. It was very exciting. And it made me think, David, have you insured the house? I, uh, I took over Tucker's policy. How much was it for? Uh, Three thousand. I've, uh... Three I've been thousand? To... Is that all the house is worth to Tucker? He had some nerve charging us ten thousand for it. Now hold on, darling. That three thousand is just for the house. It uh, doesn't include the land. You can't insure land. Well, even so, David, I hope we haven't gotten gypped on the house. If Mister no, Tucker, we have, thinks... we haven't. Don't worry about it. As a matter of fact, Roger, I'm planning to buy a new policy right away. But David, we've got a new policy already. We have. Don't you remember? We took it right out after we signed the deed. David's forgotten. <laughs> darling, the. Insurance we signed in the county courthouse in Bridgeport, Connecticut, was, was something else again. It was insurance to ensure the, that the deed was legal. Oh. It had nothing to do with insuring the house. No? No. But the deed was all about the house, wasn't it? Yes. And this was an insurance policy on the deed. So it must have been about the house, too. No? Uh, Claudia, don't you see... She's that... got something there, David. Now you see why I didn't mention this to her before. I see very well. Oh, well, shall we eat? It's all ready and waiting for me. Baby! Baby! We're not going to buy any more insurance until you find out what that other kind we have is all about. Is this your last word on the subject? Yes, my last. Good. Now, Roger... What kind of a policy did it's you... It's a policy that will insure you for the... Policy? Why is insurance called a policy, for heaven's sake? Uh, what's that? Why is a policy called a policy? I thought that's what you said. It's a good question, David. Then you answer it, Mr. Oh, Killian. She didn't ask me. 
You answer it, Mr. Norton. <laughs> Let's eat. Well, why? Uh, Claudia, buying insurance is really like making a, a contract with the insurance company. Then why isn't it called a contract? Some insurance is. Then why is it? Frankly, I don't know. Do you, David? <laughs> I'm sure that there's a reason and then that it's good. Well? It's called a policy because... Oh, I saw you wink, Roger. But I'll forgive you. Now the leg of lamb, David. Roger, hmm? just one question about this policy you have in mind. What does it cover? Fire and related hazards. Very cheap, too. What are related hazards? Uh-oh. Catastrophes. I don't think we'll have any of those. Will we, David? Well, we do want to be covered for fire. I should say. But, David, if the house does burn down, if we lose everything we own in a fire, getting a little bit of money for it won't pay me back. Well, that's a nice sentiment, darling, but but a little bit of money will come in handy. You know, down deep, I don't believe... I don't think I believe in the principle of insurance. You what? That's right. I don't think I believe in it. Let's eat. No, I think I'll see this through right now. I can't even discuss it. Not to believe in insurance. Claudia, do you also mean life insurance? Especially but life darling, insurance. Darling, oh, buying life insurance is a wonderful way to save money. What's so wonderful about it? It seems to me that the most wonderful way to save money is just not to spend it. But buying life insurance makes you save it. You have to meet premiums. Where does that money go, David? You're always sending off checks and we never even see it again. If we needed that money all of a sudden, I wouldn't know where to go to get it. As a matter of fact, I don't think we could get it at all. All we'd do is uh, borrow it back at a very low rate of interest from the life insurance company. Borrow it back? But, David, it's ours. Why should we borrow it? Because, uh, in fact, it's... uh, not ours. Not ours? But you just said it was. Well, it is ours, but it's part of our agreement with the life insurance company that they keep it in order to increase the cash value of the policy. It's ours, and it's not ours, and if we need it, we have to borrow it like robbers. More than ever, I don't believe in life insurance. I cannot listen to another word of this. It's sheer blasphemy. <laughs> Please, do let's eat. I, I just adore like a blast. David. Why don't we just take our money and save it someplace where no insurance company would know where? And, uh, what would you do if I died? If you... I'd die too, David. I wouldn't enjoy any money then. A trust fund is for women like you who think they're going to spend their capital. Oh. It keeps them from being able to touch it. Let, let, let's not talk about it, David. I, I don't like it. I'd even rather talk about insurance for the house than insurance for you. Fine. But uh, first, Claudia, where do you think the $30,000 you would get from my life insurance policy come from? hmm? Where do I think? Well, you've been sending it in every month. Must be way over that by now. I think you ought to stop sending them money, David. You do. Well, it's plenty by now. Darling, I've got many more years to uh, send them money before I put in as much as you'll get out. Really? If I should die tomorrow or in a year or so... must you talk like this? You would make an enormous profit on me. And that's another thing I don't like about insurance. The only way you can get even with the company is to die young. And I think it's dreadful to put somebody in that position. Don't you? You talk to her, Roger. Let's get back to the house insurance, Claudia. There's just one more thing I have to say. David, I'm never going to let you buy or sell or whatever it is you do any more of those insurance policies. That's an ultimatum? It is. Claudia sounds exactly like every other woman I have ever spoken to about insurance. Now, I do? Now, you've touched it to the quick, Roger. Claudia, my dear, insurance is protection, a safety measure, like, uh, uh, like uh, suspenders. When you're wearing a belt. Let's get back to the house before we get into any more details. Uh, Now, what was some of the extended coverage on that floater you were talking about? Of course, you'll cover the house to its utmost value. Fire. Then there's smoke, hail, explosion, riot, vehicle explosion, and tornado damage. And all for a dollar and a half more per premium. Mm. But is it worth it? You insure the house for 20,000, furnished, and for one dollar and a half more, you David, grab it! Grab it? But it's such a bargain. Bargain? It's a funny thing to call it. 
I don't remember there having been an airplane hitting a house in Eastbrook in years. Or a riot on River Road, five miles from anywhere. But there might... Of course, the possibility of hail damage is not too distant. And there might be a tornado. A tornado? Certainly. You've heard of them, haven't you? Mm, not in Connecticut. One might come along, and then what would we do if we weren't insured? Yes, David, consider. Such a bargain, David. $20,000 for a dollar and a half? Better than bingo. I don't see what, what, what there is for you to even think about. Darling, I'll make a deal with you. If uh, I take this dollar and a half worth of insurance, will you promise never to say another word against insurance as long as I live? It will be as long as I live, David. Promise? Well, oh, all right. I promise. Congratulations, David, my boy. That is a major victory. Ooh, I hope the leg of lamb hasn't minded waiting. We better eat, not another word. I'll put everything on the table. Well, that was quite a victory, Roger. But I am exhausted. <laughs> that wife of mine, if she weren't so darn logical, I wouldn't mind her disagreeing with me so much. She is logical. But thank your heaven, she likes a bargain now and then. Think of me and weep. I don't own one annuity or life insurance policy. Now it's too late. You don't what? Well, I thought that Oh, you no, don't, a... don't, don't tell Claudia. But my wife would never let me buy one cent of it. Not one thin cent. The leg of lamb is ruined. Honestly. Next time I buy one, I'm going to insure it with a floater to cover unexpected company. This broadcast of Claudia... Well, Mr. Was... King, it looks like David won that bout, doesn't it? Well, yes, Mr. Killian, but uh, it was a pretty close fight there, right to the end. But you know, Claudia had me thinking. A person could save an awful lot of money on insurance and other things if it was possible to foretell the future. Uh, there are those who say you can. Oh, you mean astrology and horoscopes. Oh, but you've got to believe in them. And I don't. And David doesn't. And I'm sure Claudia doesn't. Mm. Doesn't she? I don't know. Does she? I wonder. David's going to find out tomorrow, Mr. Killian, because tomorrow Claudia discovers horoscopes. And that's going to be quite a discovery. Yes, I should say it would be. Good night, Mr. Killian. Good night, Mr. Killian. As I was saying, this broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. <laughs> If somebody edges you out of line at the meat counter, you can let it annoy you, or you can decide to take it easy and have an ice-cold Coke. You'll find a Coca-Cola cooler in more and more food stores these days, and there couldn't be a more fortunate spot for one, because marketing does get to be a chore, and it's a comfort to be able to shop refreshed. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For ice-cold Coca-Cola makes any pause, the pause that refreshes.